before. Yeah. Until it's over. Yeah. Interesting. All right, let's go live. I guess that's that. I guess we should be sent to the other thing now. Hello, everybody. Uh, here we are live. I think we are uh, live. Let me find a link so I can send it in case YouTube is not doing its job. Um, uh, I think there's a lot of people still in the chat. Uh, go over to the live stream, folks. Let's talk about it. Okay. So we are here. Oh, here we are. Okay, here I am. <laughs> people are coming over here now. So, hello. Welcome to my humble abode. This is how I welcome Blake every time he shows up. Um, I hope you like the film. I hope you managed to get the film uh, while the premiere was happening. Otherwise, you can still watch it while this live stream is happening. And uh, later on, it's just going to be available for members of the channel. Um, we That's the last short film we worked on. No, it's the last short film that I co-directed or directed um blake was there as well blake is here right now look at him in the mirror <laughs> and i guess the the feature youtube feature worked huh, amazing um thanks everyone i'm glad you guys enjoyed it um i'm really really happy you guys enjoyed it and yeah we shot this in 2018 and uh, it was just a really tough film to do post-production so I'm hoping to be able to show some of that but uh, have some topics here uh, first of all I want to thank Lilu who was my co-director we both worked on this together and gave our sweat blood and tears to this um, she tackled more of the actors side and the people and I tackled more of the gear and the technical side the technical aspect of the shoot so it was a good uh, division of labor and uh, she, I don't know if she's going to be, she's watching or if she watched it with us, but it would be awesome if she was here. Uh, she's now in Argentina. So, uh, so yeah, we shot this in 2018. I found this story, I think I was telling Blake earlier in 2015 when I was just browsing in a bookstore. And <laughs> so the story is adapted from a short, the, the script is adapted from a short story by Jeff Get, jo Jeff Gander, who's in the chat with us. Uh, he's the original author of this story. And I found this in a book of Canadian short stories uh, themed around a post-apocalyptic subjects. And I like short stories. I was just browsing books and found this. And I'm like, okay, cool. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this. But I was also very lazy at the moment. So I'm like, what is the shortest short story that I can find in this book. And it was White Noise. So I read it and I'm like, wow. Wow, this is pretty good. This is so good. I'm gonna have to get this book now. So I got the book and I kept thinking about it, about how good it could turn into a short film. Because it's one location, it's one actor, um, and you can build everything into that scenario. And I'm like, this is a great, budget exercise and it's it's a great story to start from so i went into writing um and that was a long time but let's see what's going on in this chat um lucas is saying love the vibe reminds me of all the cool horror video games i'm too afraid to play that's the kind of stuff that i like to play all the time uh thank you morgan i'm glad you enjoyed it and satan is here with us now now a member of the channel great choice um Come to the dark side. Uh, <laughs> and I'm glad Jeff, uh, Jeff's here. Um, train CZ, thank you. Uh, Sammy, wow, everybody liked it. Thanks, guys. This is amazing. I was so, I was actually nervous while we were watching. It's been a while since I've been nervous about live streaming. So, uh, yes, the sound design was very, very tough because 
the base idea for the film has to do with sound. And we're just shooting a video later on where I say, I'm a terrible person with sound. I cannot figure out sound. So I had to work with someone who's really, really good at sound, which is Maggie Marangs. And she works at a studio here. She's won multiple award awards for sound mixing. And I'm like, hey, do you want a, a project that's going to take you a lot of time and a lot of work? And I have a very small budget for it. And she was like, yes, I would love to do that. So she was the true hero for the sound design of this film. Uh, we recorded a bunch of stuff after the set. We recorded wild lines and references and all sorts of crazy sounds while we were there. And then May just worked her magic on it. It was great. It was really, really good having a great team to work with. It made all the difference. Um, and... Oh yeah, so okay, now we're getting uh, we're asking Jeff questions about this story. And oh yeah, everybody talks about Pontypool, which I haven't watched yet, but it has a similar vibe apparently. The trailer sounds pretty similar and I'm curious to see it, but every time somebody mentions it I'm like, "Oh yeah, I got to watch that movie and I forget." Um Oh, hey, Lilu's here. I can see her. She's in the comment. Yay! Glad to have you here, Lilu. So if you guys want to ask anything about directing, uh, Lilu can also take questions there. Um, and uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Mark After Dark, what the hell? That was so cool. I need to read more local authors. Yes, totally. Um, so yeah, we're talking about Pontypool spontaneously one night. So the story came to Jeff uh, spontaneously one night. I don't want to think of this kind of story at night. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> oh, hey, Nico's here as well. Oh man, everybody's here. Uh, so uh, Bruno Nico's here on the chat. We filmed this in his apartment at the time. He was in the process of moving out, but we messed up his place pretty good. And it was like a full day of building the set plus a full day of taking it down. We had a table that we miraculously brought in, but we couldn't take out. So we had to saw the table, the table where she's sitting on and working. We had to saw that table in half to get rid of it. Uh, so that was Bruno and I after we shot everything and we were just wrapping. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm really glad Jeff's saying that the story translated well to the short and I'm really happy with that because that was my biggest fear. I'm like, I don't, I want to use the film medium to enhance the story. This is a two page story. It's very, very short and it turns into almost 10 minutes of film. So it's a rare case where things get longer in film. <laughs> it usually gets shorter. Uh, thank you, Curious Films. I appreciate it. And Nazir from Seattle, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, ben is saying that he loved every aspect of it, although he doesn't like horror and thrillers. Um, yeah, I love horrors and thrillers. I think you can do lots of very small budgets and just like play with people's minds. My favorite thing. Um, <laughs> Christian's like, oh, it's a live show, not just a video. Hello. So uh, Curious Films is asking what camera did we use? And we use the GH5 for everything, right? Yeah, we used the GH5. We shot everything on an Iskarama, uh, rehoused by Max. So it was a Maxi scope and contacts taking lenses. The only shots which we didn't use uh, the Iskarama were wide angles, like close up wide angles on the table. I'm loading the project here and Resolve is saying some of it, no. I'm just checking this to make sure that I can pull up the edit and the VFX for you guys to look. Oh yes, it works, Blake, this is amazing. Okay, so we got everything here um, and I can show things. Yeah, okay, so we'll go back to that in a second. I'm just gonna continue on these questions for a little bit. Um, but yeah, everything was shot on the GH5 uh, it was pretty low light and we pushed it pretty hard. Um, Blake's looking at me like, I gaffed it. What do you mean it was low light? <laughs> it was pretty well lit. Um, and 
Uh, yeah, so the JH5 contact size. We had a jib inside the apartment for the overhead shot. And that was, that was a thrill because we had the GH5 die twice on that jib because the cards that we were using had not enough of a fast data rate to record everything. So the camera would get hung up and we lost a good take that way. And I'm like, oh no, we got to put this up again and do this shot once more. Um, but yeah. Yeah, the jib was, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was that. Yeah, there was a scare with the jib. It was it was pretty fun. Um, jib inside of an apartment. It's like how close can we get to the ceiling? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, ben Chav is asking suggestions of where to find short stories or books when the sh the shops are closed. Um, this I learned from Ariana. Ariana is like Goodreads. Just go on Goodreads. I've read a lot of short story compilations so i've read wastelands and uh, this one is in fra uh, white noises and fractured um but i've read a bunch of others mainly like science fiction and horror uh because of that <laughs> uh weverton vfx says he likes a lot of the color and the vibe so thank you uh matt leaf who we previously interviewed for this channel did the color correction for this film uh Fun fact, Bohush, who we interviewed last week, is actually the guy who's voicing George in the film. We can't hear much of what he says, but that's him. Um, and I didn't even connect the dots. If I had realized that, I would have mentioned it in that live stream and told him that this would have been happening today, but I forgot. Um, but yeah, also, I'm noticing that you guys are not hitting the like button, so do that now, please. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Uh, let's see, I do not have a sequel or a follow-up. Uh, this, we funded this film through Kickstarter. Uh, Kickstarter? No, it was Indiegogo, but we were not nearly as successful as Sure. <laughs> we had a budget of, I think it was $2,000. And most of it came from the crowdfunding and a lot of it came from me. So if there's any sequel or any other short film project i gotta figure out a better way to get the funds for it because it's a it was rough and it's it was a lot of work it was a lot of work uh, lilu and i planned this thing extensively we had our shot lists and we shot this over two days and the crew that was working with us was just like this was the chillest shot shoot that we've been on uh so for me that was enough accomplishment i'm like well if everybody here is happy to be here this is not what i'm used to in a film set and that's what i want to aim for so goals um let's see okay so everybody that's here and hasn't seen the film yet you should check it out now before it becomes unavailable. It's going to go only for members of the channel. Otherwise, you can become a member of the channel and just watch it anytime. Watch it multiple times. Watch it over and over. Be obsessed about it. Uh, make a, a review of it. That would be great. I'd love it. Um, yeah, so Jeff is saying it's it's hard to follow up this because then you have to build all the outside world from this apartment. And that's kind of what we avoided the entire time by closing the blinds and just building everything with sound. Um, Mark After Dark is asking, how much pre-production went into this short? Uh, did you storyboard or did you come up with the shots on set? Oh, well, uh, yeah, we storyboarded everything. Let me see if I can find something uh, here. Documents, location, storyboards. Here we go. Yeah. I have some storyboards here, not all of them. Um, are we there? Yep. Okay, yeah, so we have some storyboards. Um, we realized that as soon as, like we have a lot of repeating shots. This, these are Lilu's drawings, like amazing stuff. And these are mine, not amazing stuff. <laughs> and I had a model of the apartment. Let me see if I can find photos of that as well. Location, scout. I 
measured the apartment carefully to make sure that we could build and put all the props there. Um, this is the apartment. This is Bruno. Hello. And this is Dillis. Dillis also helped us a lot in this film by, well, letting Bruno not sleep in his house. <laughs> and what is this? Oh, this is the 3D apartment? No, no. Oh, man. Uh, I guess it's, um, what is the, the Google SketchUp project that I don't have anymore? Um, so yeah, I modeled the apartment and had all the props designed in, like the bookshelves, all the stuff that we were planning to use, we decided where it was going to be. And then Lilo and I went shopping for props. Let's see if I can find props. Documents? Nope. Auditions? Nope. Ref? Nope. Where are the props? Production design. Yeah, because we also did production design. So props. We had we went to three different prop houses. We took photos of everything that looked remotely interesting. And then we picked stuff from these these photos. Like, let's see if anything from here. This thing made it into the film. And then it stayed in my house for a million years. $15, look at that. Oh yeah, I brought this back to the shop. And I'm like, hey, I used this on a film, but I don't have any more use for it. I just want to give you back. And he was like, we don't do returns. I'm like, no, I don't want my money. I just want to give you the thing again. And it's like, oh, I never had this happen before. I'm like, well, there's always a first time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we just, this is one of the key props. This thing shows up a bunch and this thing is one of the main things that uh, Amanda interacts with. And Amanda's played by Leslie Appleton, who we found here in Vancouver and was amazing to work with, so easygoing. Oh, love it. Um, and then on set, I think we mostly like try to solve problems when things didn't work exactly as we planned, but there was a lot of planning into it. Um, let's see, Emma, I couldn't... Can you use SSD to record straight instead of an internal memory? Um, not on the GH5. The GH5 had better internal support for recording. We were recording all I 400 megabits uh, open gate, and there was no support for external recording using that at the time. Uh, Curious Films is Javid from Bangladesh, independent filmmaker. Anamorphic Lens not available here, but I'm planning to short, shoot a short film, which I'll take uh, with Anamorphic Lens at a cost. Um, go for it. Suray is the way to go if you're on a zero budget. Um, Thrift Books is a great source for affordable books. There you go. They ship fast too. Um, yeah, finding books. Read local authors. It's amazing. It's great. We have lots of good people here. It's amazing. Okay, so I'm going to jump into the edit, and I think we're going to look at some shots. We did a little bit of this for Lincoln the other day, and you guys were excited about it. Uh, so let's, let's see how this turns out. Before we jump into the edit itself, I have this photo of the timeline. And this photo of the timeline is a great representation of why it took me almost two years to finish this after we shot. Everything that's blue, like regular blue, is a non-VFX shot. Everything else has some sort of effect. If it's like a TV replacement or a fix or erase some markers or track some people in. Because one of the perks at Indiegogo was you can be in the film if you send us a photo and you contribute to the funding. So we had to add a bunch of people in there and some people we couldn't figure out where or we didn't have the budget to print the photos and we just added them in post. Uh, so we're gonna get to that. And this is my timeline in Resolve. Let's see what this is doing. I don't need to see anything from audio. I just need to see video and I don't need this clock or this clock. I guess it's just this. And these are all the VFX shots, right? Yeah, these are the VFX shots. So if I disable this, is it V? No, D? No. Wow. Hotkeys, who needs them, right? Yeah, it's D. 
If I disable this clip, it just becomes black. Amazing, because this one underneath is disabled as well. Yeah, so this is without color. Um, and you can see stuff like there's lots of markers on this television here. This thing is not on. It's overall much brighter than the final result. <laughs> and we just exposed for the bright. Like we wanted to get as much information into the capture as we could to play with it in post-production. And these are our quasar lights that are rigged everywhere. Everything is rigged to go down in the middle of a shot. Um, let's see. Lots of unplugging stuff. Oh yeah, lots of unplugging stuff in the middle of takes. Uh, lots and lots and lots. Uh, I still have my GH5. I also upgraded. So I have an S5, S1H, and a GH5. All of those are very uh, used in our regular shoots. Uh, we do a lot of, yeah, we're running the S1H right now. Uh, the S5 and the GH5 are just behind me. And I use them for the reviews and all the other stuff. If you love a book, please post a review, Jeff is saying. So yes, that's very true. Ariana does a lot of that. Ariana reads a ton of books and she reviews almost all of them. Um, Aram is asking if it was all shot in one day or did I have pickup shots? Everything was shot in two days. It was a weekend, so it was Saturday and Sunday. We had, I think it was 10 hour days, not even 12. Um, and uh, we didn't have any pickups. Everything was just captured on the day. We shot a bunch of other things. We were like, maybe we'll need this later. And we didn't, so we just played safe. Uh, Lucas is saying, so it really was well lit. Yes, it was. <laughs> Blake's like, don't look at me now. Um, so let's look at this edit and just pick a shot. Let's find one with a map. The map is the thing that I'm, this is my favorite shot, but I'm gonna, yeah, why not? Let's do my favorite shot, sure. Um, that's not the shortcut. This is the shortcut for it, okay. Sorry guys, it's been like more than a year since I opened this project for the last time. So this is our original shot. This is the moment right after she restarts the generator and everything is coming back to life. And this is how it plays out. Go in one frame, one frame. Come on, resolve, go one frame. Okay, don't go one frame if you don't wanna. Here we go. So this is how the shot looked like and the lights come on and she walks back in. And that's the deal, like no TVs, all of this stuff, like this is off, nothing is going on here, nothing is going on this TV as well. If I do full screen, does it show, does it go? Yeah. Oh, nice, this is good. And like the map is always here, this map is always on. Um, and that's not the case when we're watching the final film. So I'm gonna turn on the VFX shot. Oh, damn, I always do the wrong, so here we are on the VFX shot and we have some of the lights are off. This TV turns on. I'm just gonna replay this shot, right? Oh no. I'm being unprepared here, guys. I'm so sorry. Okay, let's replay this one shot. So if we replay this, like it's much darker in the foreground. So I have a mask for that. And everything comes back to life gradually. Um, you can see this TV comes on, this other TV on the left comes on, the little uh, oscilloscope comes to life. The foreground is much darker than the background. And we can have a sense that things are coming back to life. Like the needles start to move around, all these little things. Did I go too far? Yes, I did. Here we are again. Like if you look closely into these needles, you're gonna see them. I don't know if the streaming quality will allow this, but in After Effects, I'll punch into this. And it's just a lot of detail to pack it into one shot. Um, let's see, wow, that's very contrasty. Every frame is so, Every frame is so dense, yes. Um, 
so here in After Effects, is this the shot? Yeah, this is, oh no, this is the beginning. So I can probably find the code for this shot, 004060070. Zero, zero. I had to break them down in scenes. Although everything is continuous, we had to figure out like a way to break it into scenes. Because this script is like one location, one actor, there's no breaks. So we broke it into story elements that would configure each scene. And we have 004, 0060. So this is one part of it. And then there's another part. I think this is where the lights come on. But After Effects is a little slow because it's heavy. Um, Aram is asking after I'm finished with the films, do I post it right away or do I let it sit for a bit and come back with fresher eyes? I've never had the luxury of not being late. Like we shot this in 2018 and we were like, this will be done by like February of 2019. And it took the world going into the apocalypse for me to have time to sit down and be like, okay, let's do the post-production. Because Ariana helped me a bunch with it, but there was just so many shots. It's like 60 post-production VFX shots in this. Um, so I'm always just like, I got to finish this, but I got other stuff that needs to be done first. And it's always a, a struggle. Uh, Mark After Dark, this is really interesting. Not only the VFX, but I own a GH5 too, and it's low light isn't great. So you're almost shooting day for night and just crushing the blacks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we were writing the ISO pretty high. I think we were 1600, 3200 at some point. And okay, so here's our shot. Let's see if I scrub forward if this is going to take forever to load. And you can see that we also shot this on a very wide lens. Um, this is the 21 and we shot it with the full sensor instead of the four by three or like even 239 to 1 or 266 to 1 which is the output of this film um, and the reason I did that when using wide lenses is because I wanted to be able to crop and adjust uh, my framing according to the story's needs so here we saw this light in the shot we have the map oh wait this map is off at this point if we look at the original shot the map is on all these TVs are here and I'm like okay I got I to gotta do a bunch of work here. Um, I got to erase this. Got to turn off all these lights here or figure a way that they will blink. Got to paint these things, add this image. And it's in this one, I didn't do it. But on 70, I guess I did. Oh, here it is, 60, 70. So 70. After Effects, so fast. Just so, so fast. <laughs> this is also the last time I wrote something that is narrative and not a video for YouTube. Whoa. I think my computer is freaking out. Did you see it blink? Yeah? I think I'm getting to the peak of my video ramp. <laughs> Video memory. Yeah, this comp is not being happy about it. Oh man, I want to show things. Okay, here we go. Uh, so I didn't erase the light on that one, but the map is here. And what we had was for every shot that this map showed up, uh, we had a plate with the map off. Nothing happening, just a few seconds of the map being off. Same lighting, same everything. And a plate with it on. And what that allowed me was to create uh, a version of the map where it's just off. So I, this is a mix of painting and... Is it too washed out? Should I add the... I think the light would be good. Yeah, okay. So let's add the LUT and the gamma. Unknown exception. Oh, well, out of memory. That was not a surprise. Okay, so we had the LUT here. Okay, so this map, I had to turn all the lights off and this is what we get here. And then I had to turn on the lights back 
Oh, because of the third resolution, it's not going to do it. Please let me do it. I will close all the other comps for you. Yeah, I guess I will close the resolve if I need it. I'll open it back. Would you like to save? Sure, because it's local. <laughs> Blinking. Okay, After Effects, I'm giving you all the memory that you deserve. Don't bog down. Okay, so here we are. And we have, these are my on lights. I don't understand why they're in this weird shape. Oh yeah, because this light's not the final light. And there's a glow somewhere. So I turned off all the lights. Boom. And then I turned on back the, some lights. They have individual masks around them. And if you go deep enough, you will find that each mask has an expression for it that controls how randomly it blinks. If it's on and off, depending on the other masks and depending on an overall parameter that sets the interval that these lights should be blinking at. So this way I don't have to manually animate any of this besides writing the expression and figuring that out, which took like a couple days. Um, then after getting the map done, we had, so this is where I'm controlling the lights from. There's more expressions in here. There's a lot of expressions in here. Okay, there's more expressions than I remember. Oh yeah, there's a checkbox for each of the lights. So there is like 47 little lights in there. Uh, the TV, which TV is that? Oh, it's a TV that's off. The TV on. Which one is TV one? I think it's this one. No, it's this one. Yeah. So we have this TV pop pop on. We have a glow around it uh, that takes over and bleeds over the foreground elements because attention to detail. That's what you get when you live with someone that works in comp. They're like, this is not well integrated. And then you do 17 versions of it. And then I have another TV. This one is TV two. What is TV two? TV2 is this tiny one back here. Then we have TV3, which is the other one. Up here. And the oscilloscope, which is somewhere. The oscilloscope is here. And I also put, it a, li put a light in this little speaker. Uh, where are the needles? I know the needles are here somewhere. Yeah. So the needles are here. I'm just going to run this shot as like the full thing. And none of this was powered. So I had to erase the needle, put a new needle in, and also write an expression for it to bounce around as if it was alive and turned on by when Amanda turned back on the power. So this was the thing. <laughs> so considering how much work you had to do for this, mm -hmm. if you were to make this again, would you try to do it more practically or would you stay visual heavy like this? I, I think we wanted to do a lot of it more practically, especially the stuff with the map. But it was good to do it with the VFX way because I learned a ton of After Effects and like how to avoid repetitive tasks. It's like, oh, I've done this for another shot. How can I repeat it? Or like, how can I make this in a way where it's going to look organic, but it's not going to take me a ton of time. Uh, so that was good. It was also good to learn the GH5 capability of just being like the image being torn apart in post-production and still holding up great afterwards. That was really, really good to see. Um, if I was doing this all over, like this exact same project, I might have avoided some shots where she's like going in front of the TV. Let me pull this up because I can find that easy. Uh, final. Mute. So shots like this. No, no. So we have nothing in this shot, no visual effects. And then here we have this TV. So we have to cut her out from the background, clean the TV, clean all of the stuff. Her hair goes in front of it. You can see if you really pay close attention, you'll see that this is not a great roto. This is not a great cutout. And 
this kind of stuff I would have avoided if I was doing this again. Uh, I would have been smarter about it. Move the, like put the TV here instead. Move it, moved it over just a little. Um, it got to a point where I could not roto things anymore. I was like, I cannot put up with roto, and I went over to Fiverr. It was the first time that I used Fiverr. I hired people on Fiverr to roto shots, and I pay them well for it. And I'm like, thank God I can get someone to help me on this roto because I cannot do it anymore. There's a lot, a lot of rotoscoping. Yeah. Uh, oh no, it's the white noise. <laughs> um, Mark's saying he would have loved to edit this. Uh, effects heavy work like rotoscoping and mapping. Oh man. And Bruno's like, programming, scripting for the win. Yes, I couldn't have not finished this film if I didn't script a lot of stuff in the post-production part of it. Um, I think I learned more scripting during White Noise than while making the calculator for the blog, <laughs> which is insane. It's like, I'm making a calculator and I'm making a movie. The movie is harder. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you guys got to ask more questions. I'm I'm running out of ideas here. I have the film. I have the cut. I have the visual effects to pull from. The, uh, like shooting with the uh, Karama, how does that affect like, the production? Oh, yeah. There's some shots. I'm going to go here again. Uh, shooting the Karama was good because it was it had been rehoused. Otherwise, it would have been a nightmare. Uh, we also used a wide angle adapter when we needed to get just a little wider, but we didn't want to switch to spherical. So we used the front wide angle adapter, which compromised the quality of shots a little bit. Let me pull one. I think this, no, it's like an OTS shot. This shot uses a wide angle adapter and you can see the, the, not the distortion, the loss of quality towards the edges. You can also see it bending more than the other shots. Um, I also had to make these look oval in post. It was great, fun. Uh, the clock also was not working. So we have references of the clock being on and then the clock is off for the entire time. And I had to map the clock to match the story time. So I had, I have a cut where I'm like timing what things happen in over the time of the story so I can put the clock in properly. Uh, that was a fun thing to do. Uh, also automated the clock. So depending on where it was in the cut, it was already showing the right numbers. Um, and then the Iskarama, it was really good to work with, but my main issue with it is since the contacts lenses don't have a smooth iris, they make like the hexagon shape. You can see it here on the bouquet. You can see the shapes being cut here. It's not as smooth oval bouquet. This guy here on the map, by the way, it's the head of the film program at Langara College. Let's see if I can get a better shot of him. Jonas Quastel, great guy, helped us a lot. Uh, here's Tony and Jeff, uh, the author of the script. And where's the shot of the map? Just a close-up one. Come on. I know I have it. Isn't it at the start? When she says, I built a map. No, I think it is. I think it is here. She says, I built a map and then we pin up. Yeah, here's yeah. Jonas. Yeah, so this is the guy. And it was also interesting because all of this, like we shot this thing and then I was working in post for it during quarantine where it's like, don't leave home, stay isolated, watch out for these symptoms. I'm like, wow, we really jumped the gun on this thing. <laughs> So it was kind of contemporary to finish this during uh, the pandemic. Um, kind of sad, but also it was what gave me the time to do it. Uh, in terms of like actual directing, mm -hmm. um, anything you change there, like shoot it differently, uh, or had to shoot it, you could direct it by yourself. That would change, or just sort of like with Lilo. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I would make a film if I had to direct it by myself. I don't want to direct solo yeah. ever again, I think. <laughs> it's not, no, no, no. Like, film is collaboration, and I really enjoy just 
sharing ideas and getting people involved. It's not, this is my film, I made it, it's all mine. Um, so I don't think uh, I would have done it this myself. Uh, we had a fair amount of prep time. So we rehearsed with Leslie a bunch. We discussed the story, we discussed the script, everybody, we read the short story together, we communicated a bunch with the team. And it was just great because Lilu took over a bunch of stuff that I was like, I don't know how to do this. I have no clue of how we're going to get this done. And she's like, oh, I can do this. And I took over some stuff that she was like, I hate this part. And I'm like, I can do it. So it was great to work, um, to co-direct. And on set on the day, there was not one shot where we disagreed. So we were, we were always on the same page. It was like, yeah, I think this was the good take. Yes. Okay. So let's move on. Oh yeah. We also didn't do like one more for safety. I don't remember us doing that. I remember, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No more one for safety. Uh, just. It's good. It's good. It's it's it recorded. Yes. So let's go. <laughs> um, Mark After Dark is asking what sort of lights we were using. Uh, we had two quasar lights on the shelves. So let's show. Yep. So these are two quasars. We have two more quasars on the light. When the light explodes, let me find the light blasting. And there's a huge like lighting shift in the middle, which was always my, it's here. So inside of this thing, which is also painted out because I made it out of cardboard, um, there are two quasars rigged up and going on a C-stand, I think, or the ceiling, yeah, C-stand arms, uh, on a dimmer that Blake was controlling from afar. So this is giving us all the top light. And then we had a little light up here in this corner as well, which you saw in this other shot. Right? Did we see it here? Oh man, uh, if I go back to this and then I go back to the same shot to 60. I know it's in here. We have a little, it's a photo deox, like a little LED panel cranked up to the maximum output right here, rigged on a stand uh, behind the map. The map is doing a lot of the lighting, those little twinkly lights. I've never had so many twinkly lights before on a, on a set. And we had a Kino, was it a Kino? It was a, the big... Yeah, I think it was a Kino in the yeah. hall. Yeah, it was in the hall and then it was just here in the back of the set making a fill for when we went full darkness. So at this point we had like a giant four lamp Kino, which was by far the biggest light in this film, uh, doing all of this backlight here. Uh, we have a little bit of eye light. I don't remember what we were using. Um, oh yeah, I guess it is the, the photo deox light up there. And then later when she comes back, so the Kino is back here as well. Uh, you can see it on the, well, you can see the lights of it. The mess of cables is down here on the table. Like all of these cables running in, they are set deck, but they're also actual power cables. <laughs> and then she turns on this little light mid shot, right? Come on, Leslie, do it, do it for me. She put, pulls it in and turns it on mid shot and it just works. So that's a practical 60 watt bulb. And I think that's all the lighting we had there. Like this TV was kicking up zero light. So no yeah, it was off. That, that would have been great if we had it. If we had TVs with static, that would have been awesome. That would have been a, a big difference. But yeah, so that was our lighting setup. So let's see what else. Uh, yeah, I guess I addressed that question. Um, I don't know. I don't know what else. We had a slider from Matt. The slider gave us a lot of trouble. Uh, we were just not... The camera was too heavy and we didn't have enough tripods or stands for it. So, But the, it, it turned out that the camera was just too heavy um, for for the head that we had on the slider. But we still have a couple shots in there massively 
stabilized. A lot of stabilization going on uh, on this stuff. And, and that was it. It was a pretty simple no handheld, which was a first. I'm always like handheld. And this was not the case, not at all. So yeah, I think this is all I have on this experience. If you guys wanna ask more questions, shoot them. Otherwise we're almost done here. Um, we are, yeah, so if you're, if you just got to the channel, we are talking a lot about anamorphics in the cookbook. It's time that I promote that a little bit. Uh, the cookbook is our ongoing course. It's free for everyone, but if you're a member of this channel, you get early access to a lot more videos. Um, right now we're talking about anamorphic optics and how they work. So we're talking about focus methods. We're talking about different squeeze factors. If it's better to rent or own gear, we're talking about, what else did we talk about? Uh, the difference between cine lenses and consumer lenses or lenses and adapters in general. This is all in module two, and then we're gonna jump into module three to talk about cameras and all the settings that are related to camera um, that affect when shooting and anamorphic. So that kind of stuff is going on besides all the live streaming and all the other videos, because we're doing a lot of content here. <laughs> Blake and I have been, we just, we're in the process of hiring another editor because we have too much content that we can't put out fast enough and um, we just have to, get more hands on deck. So if you want to support this initiative or if you want to get more content, just uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, become a member. It costs $3 a month and that's three Canadian dollars, I think. Yeah, well, it's $3 and so yeah, it's like a coffee that we are going to go have right after this live stream and it helps us greatly. But yeah, that's all I have. Um, film with love, uh, just watch the short, awesome work. Thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it was great. It was great seeing all of you here. It was, I guess this was the premiere for White Noise. Um, and it was a great crowd. <laughs> Anything else? I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good, guys. Thank you. Uh, if you haven't hit the like button yet, just do it. We appreciate it. And I'll see you on Monday with something very new and refreshing. See you then. Bye. <laughs>